Kroiso, welcome. I am Sofia Larkova from the Further Mathematics Support Program in Wales. My Mathematics Ibaub. Mathematics is for everyone. And on screen, you can see various people who are united for their love of mathematics. Today, I am going to talk about one of them. In 2014, Miriam Mirzakhani became the first woman, the first person from Iran, and the first Muslim to be awarded the most prestigious prize in mathematics, called Fields Medal. Miriam was born in Iran and went to school there. She later studied in several countries and was awarded many prizes for her mathematics. In Princeton, when Miriam was a student, she is remembered for her notorious questioning while English was not her first language and she was taking notes in Persian, she used every opportunity to ask questions if she didn't understand something. But let's hear from Miriam about how she became a mathematician and what mathematics she did. I wasn't always very excited about math. I was more excited about reading novels and I thought I would become a writer one day. <laughs> I got excited about it, maybe just as a challenge, but then I realized that it's really nice and that I enjoy it. These were quite difficult times. It was during the war. Right after the war, I had a lot of opportunities. I went to a very good middle school and then high school. I think I was the lucky generation because I was a teenager when things became more stable. My main interest is understanding structures you can put on a surface. There are different ways of looking at it. Either you have a surface with some additional geometric structures or this kind of problems are related to understanding the space of such structures. One very famous example is if you have a billiard table and you start from a point and you hit the ball and it hits the boundaries and it moves, say, forever, you want to see the trajectory of the ball. Would it cover all your billiard table? Can you find closed billiard paths? And interestingly enough, this is an open question in general if you don't put any restrictions on the angles of the polygon that you started. There are two types of questions. One is about you have a surface with a geometric structure and you're trying to understand some properties of this geometric structure that you have. The other questions are related to you have a surface and you have a geometric structure and you start deforming this geometric structure and then you want to see what kind of surfaces you would get. Some of the problems like you know the properties of a generic surface, a random surface, but it's really hard to say something about a single given geometric structure on the surface. Some of the work that I've done with different collaborators shows that sometimes the surfaces are very similar to the ones of a generic surface. You can ask these questions about the hyperbolic surfaces or these flat surfaces or different geometric structures. I think these problems are important because they are related to some other problems. Even if you are interested in higher dimensional manifolds, one way of dealing with them is trying to find some nice surface inside of them you end up learning a lot about other spaces and properties of other actions. So it gives you a lot of information. It's not only the question, but the way you try to solve it. Many of us find mathematics difficult, and Miriam was often asked about her secret of doing math. So let's see how to solve problems like Miriam. Miriam called herself a slow mathematician. The beauty of mathematics only shows itself to more patient followers. You have to spend some energy and effort to see the beauty in math. So, it's okay to be slow. It's good to take time to understand mathematics in details. There are a lot of similarities between learning mathematics at school and being a mathematics researcher. From my own experience, I totally agree with this advice. Be prepared to be lost. Doing research is challenging as well as attractive. 
It's like being lost in a jungle and trying to use all the knowledge that you can gather to come up with some new tricks and with some luck you might find a way out. Miriam is known to spend time on the same problem. For example, she would come back to the same problem again and again till she sees something new in it. There are different characters and you are getting to know them better. Things evolve and then you look back at the character and it's completely different from your first impression. So don't hesitate and come back to those problems that you can't do straight away. We are often told by our teachers to do a sketch or to draw a picture when solving problems. Miriam used this in her research. You can see on these photographs her drawings. She used large rolls of paper and was most comfortable sitting on the floor. Her little daughter thought that she was an artist. In fact, Miriam was drawing because she wanted to understand her math better. This advice is extremely important. Some philosophers agree that mathematics deals with objects that do not exist, but are mentally constructed by us, humans. New mathematics is often discovered or invented in conversation between different mathematicians. So doing mathematics together with a friend is the best way. When at school, Miriam had a friend and both girls traveled to mathematics olympiads together. Find the math that you enjoy and do as much math as possible in school as well as at home. Miriam said, I think it's really about what you actually learn in class. It's mostly about things that you stay motivated to go and continue to do on your own. Finally, do not give up and give it a go. I do not think that everyone should become a mathematician. But I do believe that many students don't give mathematics a real chance. So use Miriam's advice and try and do more math. I'm often asked about what is the reward of doing math? For Miriam, it was the excitement of understanding the problem and realizing that there is more math to discover. Unfortunately, Miriam died very young from cancer, but Miriam's legacy lives on. And I'm confident that Miriam's story will inspire more young people from all countries and all nationalities to do mathematics. It certainly inspires me to teach math. This video was prepared for you by Further Mathematics Support Program Wales, funded by the Welsh Government. If you want to learn more about Miriam, here are a few links and we invite you to visit furthermass.wales slash worlds to learn more mathematics from different countries. Dioch!